Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Saving Your Disaster campaign. It's already lost is the name of uh, the campaign where we're trying to like regain a foothold in the mid game from an effectively already lost campaign. We've done good so far if we look at the overall kind of avatar project. It is really moderate. There is a fallback option here. And essentially, I'm just trying to kind of resolve it to a way or uh, to a position where I feel confident that the owner of the campaign can take it over and blast through it without failing again. At the moment, things are looking good. I think a few more missions and we should be there. For now, let's take a good look here. We have our sharpshooter well she's tired but that is no excuse he is tired but that is no excuse we're still taking him same team as uh, last time i really want to level those characters deep six here is the highest grenadier right right all right good sounds like a plan destroying the alien relay is what we're going to do i've already spotted a sector pod which Thankfully, we have plenty of blue screen rounds and it should not be a problem. Maybe the Chosen intervenes, but even then, I think we're fine. And look who has landed. Damn right, it's us. Landed on high ground and I know that map tile system very well. So this here is the typical L shape and normally the target is over here. This time it's directly on the corner. So uh, this is an interesting, really small map. And whenever you are on a small map, you can make sure, or you can be sure that the enemies will be right around the corner. No exception this time. Moving all the way over there. Yep, I figured that this is going to be an absolute slaughterhouse map. Well, this was, would be an incredibly interesting move. Highly aggressive, but still not to be seen from the enemy. <laughs> I like it. Okay, that one was good. I like it. Grenadier moves up because we need her in the front line. And mid to back line, Slider is doing her job. Maybe should have taken her, uh, left her on, uh, on high ground due to the death from above situation. All right. Well, there we go. We got our first contact right away. So this is going to be fun. Now here is the reason. Here's the reason why the pistol shots are more effective than just the sniper, as you can see. Blue screen rounds are just piling up with the damage. I don't even need to shred this guy. Three normal shots. And that's a, that's a done deal. We know there's another pack over here, which I am personally fine... If we were to tr uh, trigger it, this here is a super aggressive position. Not sure if I like it that much. If we get to deal with all of the armor, can we do that without? Jeopardizing our mech. 
potentially. Just need to find the right uh, play. This here should leave the mech untargeted. Not sure though. It's a bit of a strange setup. Might as well position ourselves over here. That could trigger another pack, but I'm totally fine if that would happen. All right, it's officially on. No more holding back. The Viper saw the Viper suit and decided to go into panic mode. All right, good, good, good. I know exactly what we're going to do. Because whenever you are in a situation where the, the enemy has taken a good position, aggression sometimes is the right counterplay. The reason why we move him first is we want to use, or her first is want to use her actions. Got to remove the cover, really. And start with getting rid of both of these guys. Good, we got enough targets. Now, off we go. Throwing axe. into kill Impressed yet? we could move up and continue the onslaught Not sure if I want to I think we're just standing the ground and we'll use a mimic beacon against against the um, Andromedon over there. Okay. So this Archon here we can take on, well the Archon will likely, very likely, uh, start to use Blazing Pinions, which sucks but it is what it is. 40% chance of killing this guy outright, 100% chance of killing him. We're immune to fire and the Purifier well, the Purifier would throw a grenade over here, but only if we're clustering up, not if we're moving over here. Plus, we can use the Mimic Beacon. So the right play here is to get rid of the Shield Bearer. Then essentially make sure to deal with the Archon. We're tanking him with Bladestorm, so there is going to be another attack right afterwards. And before we use the Mimic Beacon, let's just make sure that everything's in order. 
I think we're going to take an aid protocol over here. And then the Mimic Beacon. Making it a bit more interesting, shall we? There we go. the bladestorm I was talking about and now potentially blazing pinions are going to happen maybe moving on and taking a shot oh no the mimic beacon we got a lot of leverage out of that mimic beacon fantastic that was awesome what is our hacking chance Disorientation or reduction. Yeah, we don't need either. The disorientation is nice and we could use that with a specialist. Not needed. Moving up uh, could be an option. A risky one though. Let's see, how do we want to resolve this interesting position? We'll definitely get rid of the Archon with only the Templar. Could use some more cover removal. Our last cover removal. Might as well use the frost bomb to get uh, to CC him and just deal with all of them back here. That would be an option. I think we're going down that path. If we were to grapple, we could grapple over here, move up, and even frost bite, which is an aggressive. But pretty good move. Only 60% chance. And this guy here is blocking our path. And we don't want to stand all too close to him. So let's see if this here is going to work. Perfect, that's all I wanted. Saves the grenade uh, for later usage. And I don't want to stand too close to the potentially exploding enemy. Instead, solid aggressive positioning over here. And just making sure that we're dealing with him correctly. I'm going. It's hundred percent shot and a kill. And luckily I have not decided to stay there. Instead, we're continuing to move up. This could be a kill. Should have reloaded uh, first, but overall still okay. And now we've ensured that this is actually going to be a full wipe.
moving up. So we're getting closer to the target. There we go. That's another bit of focus. that's really going to move the needle well it could so might as well take the shot the interesting we got some reinforcements coming all right got them reinforcements coming I already know how we're going to deal with them with Bladestorm. Before we're dealing with the objective, let's shred the Andromedon. Look at that, four shredded. The guy has lost all of his armor. Moving up. I do not yet want to do that. Hmm. Let's move up. Hit the guy. Teamwork. Into killing. Now he lost his ability to take cover and that also means we can just chain shot and get the guy down on, all right the second shot has missed interesting Sweet, sweet focus. And let's position ourselves. And let's overwatch. Can't reload. We can only reposition. And here is fine. There's still a sector portal around. But I am not afraid of that. What an interesting mission so far. Lots and lots of action. Hello. You landed in the worst possible spot, guys. <laughs> oh, nice. That was a lot of damage. Okay, cool. So, the advantage of pre-positioning is from time to time... You can then uh, just start the cleanup. Lots of damage just with a pistol. 
And, oh, we could have hacked. That's interesting. Well, 8 protocol over here. Into a solid kill. Enemy destroyed. Into moving over here. Into dealing with the priest. Alright, it's disoriented and stasis, of course. But we can counter that with parry. Not even breaking a sweat here. Yeah, well, that does not mean anything. Good, we, we are in range, might as well reload, and might as well start destroying the mission objective. Overwatch, and we're good. He's still disoriented, which is great, because the only thing that he can do is attack, and that again triggers Bladestorm. The rest is history. Okay, fantastic. So how about we're reloading with Deep Six and we're just taking a shot. That means afterwards it's only the sector port pack. Aggressive move in. And everybody else is moving up. Moving on target. Uh, let's move just to there. Got a nice little overwatch, more overwatch, more overwatch, and overwatch. Our position will just become more secure. As time goes. Servos engaged. Good, nothing there. Might as well start moving over. I'm going. Already there. Everyone onto the rooftop, and our Templar is ready to jump out. No one will slip past. Scanning. Optical sensors on Overwatch. Back. A reload. Come get some. And not surprisingly, the enemy starts to move in. Holy no, shit! He is shredded for four points of armor. I almost feel bad for the sector pod. Because this is going to hurt. Alright. I like the chain shot option. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to do that even over cover removal. Uh, but then again, cover removal is really, really strong. No chain shot. Instead, we're removing the cover. All right. 
And that is the point where they are being caught with their pen stone. Two, four, six, eight. Oh, that's a kill. Kill confirmed. Charging in. Sectopod thinks, ooh, we finally got someone. That is not correct, buddy. Death from above definitely pays dividends, and look at that, Sectopod. Four ten, and another ten, eleven even. And that is why cover removal was still superior. Fantastic. What a fun mission. We aggressively pushed in and killed everyone before they can really react. That last mission was quick and explosive, just how I like it. That's good viewers content, just going in and destroying every single one of them. I still got that old rifle. Superior scope, fantastic upgrade. were high and yet you have exceeded them all right so sniper is tired and got a bit of a negative trade it happens she's also tired and by the way the loadout here should have been prototype plasma rifle we just to make to it hustler even better it. maybe she can help us out restocking the bar All right, fantastic. We got 250 supplies. Um, how long until month end? Six days, that's good. Because I want more money for potential armor upgrades. Loot isn't bad, that could actually be good. But let's go for the radio relay because I want to push his monthly income so that supplies are not going to be a, a problem for him going forward. And I also want to get technical analysis. Look at that, 400. 400 supplies, that is fantastic. Good, we're going to go for the Reaper HQ to get uh, enough to make that AT Intel connection there. And once he has technical analysis, I think that that will be a quite substantial game changer. Technical analysis allows you, uh, whenever on the aliens' turn, whenever they detect you, they only get one turn on their. Uh, whenever you run into them, sorry, uh, they only get one turn on their next turn. So it is fantastic. Infestation is a nasty dark event. Not the end of the world, though. Modular cannons is good, and we even got a promotion out of it, the specialist here. So now, in terms of. Just doing this here. I was about to send the May, uh, the Templar in because ten, because ten dodge is fantastic. Could also be good on crash. Edgar Alien Poe. Could be good on a lot of people. Could be good on Mystic. Let's use Edgar Alien here. And we're requiring a, another soldier. Edgar so far doesn't have a bond. So might as well use this corporal here. And another sergeant. This could be her. Fantastic. 10 dodge is really good. And getting closer to the warlock will be necessary as well.
There we go. That was a good monk. All seeing is a nasty trait, so good for him. Additional dark event, doesn't matter. Sabotage is a problem. Okay. That stinks, but is so and so. Um, you typically kill them faster than the, um, until they can actually take a shot. This does nothing, and I don't know what that would be. Getting those extra resistance orders wouldn't be bad. Weapon speed still needs to be improved, so I think we're good to go. Do we have... No, we don't have 80 intel yet. But we do have a supply raid. And that one looks brutal. 25 enemies. But there are also losses in here, so... Maybe not as brutal as the first impression. Got a gatekeeper. Oh, it's okay. So... That will give us even more Elarium alloys and uh, supplies, which is needed for the armor upgrades uh, that that we would require in terms of in terms of just general roster. Got a couple of soldiers that are tired, so I will need to find the right mix of soldiers to take into the mission. But. Yeah, overall it looks good. I think the spark soon will be at self-healing status. Once that is happening, we should be fine. Just the roster, two colonels, four majors. Maybe get one or two of those captains up, Saiken. That would not be bad. And maybe another grenadier. But yeah, the roster starts uh, to look really good. Part armor in 11 days. I am hoping that I can finish that for him. And then it's just weapon upgrades from here on. Don't upgrade the uh, plasma bolt caster, just ignore that weapon. Don't upgrade the skirmisher for starters as well. Beam cannon. And the sniper rifle should be the, uh, the next upgrade, so that those weapons are fine. Although the sniper rifle is not 100% needed, because we do have the sidearm, which is super strong. If you play the sniper aggressive like I have, it should really not be a problem. Not with the, not with a small weapon. And yeah, then it's armor upgrade. I think I would. I'm going to save for his armor upgrade because that is going to be a massive game changer for him as he will no longer lose um, operatives that easily. In terms of chosen stronghold, we could get rid of uh, the assassin and that would give us a fully fledged up and upgraded um, Shotgun and the katana, both of which are fantastic. We got two high-level um, assaults, so that might actually be another option. So let me let me see. We could try to go back to back into the uh, supply run and then eliminating the assassin right afterwards. Aggressive play, but I start to fall in love with the idea and then essentially we're making contact here in Indonesia and we'll get the armor. All of that should save the campaign and stabilize it to a degree. Also, uh, maybe I'm saving the assassin for last uh, so that it is the last mission of this uh, playthrough. Yeah, let's, let's do that. We're going to do the supply raid then eventually make contact by the armor do the assassin and then it is I would consider it at that point to be safe and I'll send the safe game back to the guy all he needs to do is keep the avatar progress under uh, control set half so that should not be a problem there are uh, covert ops missions that are helping and eventually we will need to actually study the codex and so on so that will happen next I'll already start that um, that way he has golden path missions as well. 
and maybe we'll get another facility lead. So that's really it, guys. That's the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and could uh, take some knowledge out of it. Uh, thanks so much for supporting the channel by clicking that little like button and leaving a comment down below. And see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.